welcome back to the single malt review we're not talking about yesterday <laughs> yesterday has been redacted mm. it has been removed from the yes. um the history um we're moving on <laughs> moving the hell on with this one we go from number <laughs> yeah. seven um which is sort of right in the middle but dave's going to take it you can almost do it together wouldn't that be a lady in the tramp spaghetti moment um probably best we don't um, right here it comes here it comes oh I almost looked that would be terribly good, bad so bad what? Oh, just make sure I had the right one okay that's covered right, we've got it good yeah let's have that glass break through that rather elegant wax seal these are such nice models though did that land in your glass uh, no oh, almost right. for an extra point I'm a big fan of the 30 mil sample bottle from drinks by the dram it is a perfect size measure for sampling oh wow this is crystal clear this is uh I think this this might be one of our well no American examples North American examples um, despite this might be mm. a this is clearly an uncolored whiskey and you can really tell because that could be a glass of Sauvignon Blanc yeah um, this is the color as I like to say of honesty mm. but also young whiskey so tells us two things ooh now, speaking that's of Sauvignon Blanc there's a um hmm a little a hint of sweetness a bit of sharpness Mm. And some flinty minerality. Ooh. Hello, Isla. Oh, that's a good girl. What's going on here? This I'm getting a I'm getting a touch of the Irish. Um mm. and here, Isla, we've done we've been here before, and I'm going to intercept you if you go anywhere near that microphone. Here's a good camera. Hey. There is an off screen camera who is being adorable but also perilously close mm. to our precarious <laughs> recording technology setup. I right, can't let it distract us. No. All right, what about here? This is rather nice. Mm. Um, I'm getting a bit of a lowlandsy thing off this one. Interesting. But that could also be an Irishy thing. Um, oh, here comes the tail. Get out of there. Hmm. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. This is interesting. This is. I'm sure it's over forty percent. Hmm. It's very, very light bodied. It's Ooh, very floral. Yeah. Like quite, quite a fruity. quite a prickle picks up after a, a little moment yeah. on the tongue. It is young whiskey, but it's not super duper young whiskey. It's just uncolored whiskey. This is almost hitting in a. This could even be an independently bottled, or something of that. Mm. Effect. This is something. This is quality distilling we've got here, um, for a number of reasons. This. Yeah, it's grassy, it's mm. floral, it's the whitest of white fruits. It's extremely delicate on the nose, but the palate has this incredible intensity of flavour going on, mm. and it's almost entirely spirit-driven. If you can, I mean, you can infer from the from the shade there, but there's very, very little barrel character going on, but the spirit character is phenomenal. Yeah. I'm trying to think of the last time I had something from Scotland, which was so, so light, so pale. I, I think this is, if this is not Scotch whiskey, it is very much in the model mm. of Scotch whiskey. Much like Aaron mimics Speyside while being closer to um, Campbellton, this one, and it's difficult to say where it might be, is really, really emulating, I'm going to say, the, the very best of Speyside whiskey, hmm. if that's what's going on. But within that spectrum, it could be... It could be Irish. I do not think it's North mm. American. And if it's European, I'll be surprised by its quality. Not to say that European distilling is trash, but their mm -hmm. single malts have been... There's a kind of a... There's a there's a ropiness. There's a slightly rough and ready quality to what we've encountered, which granted it has not been a great deal, but um, this will be a bit of a learning exercise for me to find out what it is. This is a hard one, folks. This is not going to be easy. So... Was I to hazard a guess, and I have to, mm -hmm. is that this is single malt whiskey. I think I'm probably closer to Ireland than Scotland in yeah. this one. And I can't pick both. So if <laughs> you agree, then I can, I guess we just have to, mm. we just have to go through door number Irish and hope that there wasn't a, you know, concrete screen behind it. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know why I Maybe. always come back to um, Takahashi's Castle or whatever that game show was but uh, anyway Takeshi's Castle sorry mm. <laughs> shouldn't have forgotten that one uh, okay so we've got malt whiskey Irish mm. 
It'd be funny if it was a water mm. fern. Or could it be an egan? We had several egans quite recently dear the calendar, and they weren't some of those nearly. Were... And again, not to ding mm. egans, but they weren't remotely this good. Okay, um, only Waterford was this good, and I'm not mm. certain because this doesn't strike me quite as the cuvee. And the mm. other Waterfords are bloody expensive, right? Um, but you know what? Maybe I'll maybe I'll pick Waterford because okay. they they make a wealth, an absolute wealth mm. um, of whiskies. They're strong, they're uncolored, and they're excellent. Yeah, um, based on our experience. So yeah, that's that's my pick for that one. You've got a, a counter pick for the distillery? No, I don't. I am. This could be anything from anywhere, and it would not surprise me mm. at this stage. So, <laughs> Waterford is yeah as solid a pick as any, okay. as far as I'm concerned. Let's go with that one. Let's go with that one. Let's see what we get. Oh, oh, well, that's this a bad is a noise. boutique bottling. It is from that boutique whiskey company. It is ten in each. Yeah. My goodness, it was a ten year old. Oh. Ah. Oh, well, I, you know, and somewhere in there, I, I did say I, I, this could be independently bottled, mm. so I'll give myself a zero points, yes. but hey, <laughs> at least I had uh, the thought for that one. Chinook back Chinook. three, cool. ten year old. Mm. We have tried a couple of Chinooks over the years. One of them was 30 years old. Um, mm. It's a funny old distillery. Does it mm. go into Does it go into Johnny Walker? I think it goes into Johnny Walker. Um, this is 49.2% wow. ABV, so this is, in fact... Well, one assumes that single cast, but that's a mm. hell of a loss for 10 that years. Hefty, that's a, yeah. That thing uh, is... Boutique do bottle at bespoke strengths. No, it's not like it'd be cast strength unless it says so. It's been yeah. intentionally watered down to that strength precisely. Well, that's a bit of a bugger. We got the malt. <laughs> we got the malt, but no, mm. we did not get the um, we did not get the region. Mm. What an interesting malt. Chinook is um, famously a... I'll show you the, the wee label yeah. there. Not that it gives much away. Chinook is a very, very, very light-bodied scotch. One of the one of the most light-bodied, um, sort of built-for-blending, you'd call them, mm. um, distilleries out there. Uh, and to see it in the wild is quite uncommon. You would never, never see it under mm. its own bottling. I don't think it's... Oh, I mean, maybe... It's one of these things that might have turned up at one stage in flora and fauna. Yeah. I don't think it has in this case, but um, you will see it independently bottled in this case um, once in a blue moon. And it's interesting. It's sort of an acquired taste and that hence mm. doesn't really um, sing of any one particular thing. I've heard um, like a soaked sponge cake. Wow. Are you sure we tried it before? And this has come up in the calendar. I don't recall us ever having had it one on the journal. It was a very, very long time ago. Uh, it was one of the first yep. whiskies we did. Um, and it was one I got for a um, for a birthday. Mm. Um, and I'd had it sort of sitting around. I think it was even a... Um, might have even been a Caden Heads. But oh. hey, we have to check uh, the tape on that one. I'm fairly sure it was right. Chinook. But um, at any rate, this is a very well chosen one. Because mm. I think this really, really does describe the very best of that distillery's character. It's so light-bodied, so spirit-driven, and that's how it should be. Um, that's usually when you get a big, big spirit-driven, light-bodied thing. It's like, well, this you know, the, this came out of one of their cheaper casks, I suppose. Mm. But I think that's where Genetic really shines. It's really when it does its best work. And this is definitely, you know, built for blending. This mm. would slide into, you know, any blend under the sun and go completely unnoticed, except to give nice, good, multi quality to it. Um, Splendid and unique on its own, though. Yeah. So this is the Batch 3. Chinook? Chinook? Is that the pronunciation? I've heard it just like every other Scottish word yeah. in the dictionary. I've heard it about three different oh. ways. That's I think the three. last one I heard was about Chinook, yeah. A solid 49.2% ABV. Yeah. That's, yeah, Boutique do manage to pick very unique expressions and bottle them at a unique strength as well to make something which is truly a just a one-of-a-kind yeah. expression of that particular sure, story. Well, I mean, I'm not sure I'm going to say I'm pleased to have got that one <laughs> wrong, but I'm pleased to be drinking it. That's for, that's yeah. for damn sure. Goodness. All right, then. Oh, well, uh, that was a slightly long one there. I can see an 11 on the screen, Whoa. and that's just, that's just criminal. So we'll see if we can maybe trim <laughs> that one down. Anyway, Slangers, join us tomorrow for another one.